Hello world and welcome to another episode of Ubar. In today's episode we are going to secure a Lambda using API Gateway Lambda Authorizer but with a request. We have tried with the token, now it's time of the request. If you want to see more content about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is another video in the API Gateway Security Mechanism playlist. I have started with a description of a rhetorical video on explaining all these things and then I move on to examples. So we have already an example with the authorizer with the token, the Lambda authorizer with the token. I leave you the video in the card or in the description box. And this video is going to be about making similar things but configuring the authorizer to use the request mechanisms. So we will uh, configure a SAM backend with an authorizer lambda that will validate this request and then a lambda that will get called and I will show you all the different configurations for this. So let's go to the code. First, before getting started with the code, let's look at what we are going to build. We have a client that sends a request to an API gateway and this API gateway has an authorizer, a request authorizer in this case. So when the request comes in, the API gateway will forward this message to the authorizer. And the authorizer, in this case, as it's a request authorizer, will analyze the whole request. It will analyze everything that it needs. It can be uh, the string query parameters, the headers, other parameters, it can be some context, different parts of the request and if everything is right then it will create a policy that says that this request can invoke the API gateway and this API gateway then will call the following lambda. So this is a very easy way to create authorization. So in the console, how this looks, if you go and create an authorizer, you have to name it and then you need to pick the type. We are going to pick the lambda type and then we need to name the function that will be the authorizer. We need to put the A or N and if you need a specific role, you will put it there as well. Then in the lambda event payload, you need to choose the request as the token we already did it in a previous video. So when you choose request, then you put the different identity sources. It can be headers, query string parameters, context, or many other parts of the request. And then the last part is if you want to have caching, we have the token authorizer that we already saw, and this is how we define it in our, our YAML, in our template YAML. We basically have, as always, my API with the same properties, and then we have a default authorizer, and we create a default authorizer, my Lambda token authorizer. Uh, we will put the payload type to be a token, and then we will define the function that needs to execute to validate this token. Then we will put the identity, that is the header and the name of the header, and if we have a custom expression to do some validation of this header before the Lambda is called, we can put it here. And that reauthorize every hundred is the caching. This is how the token authorizer works and we already seen this in the previous video where we talk about the API gateway authorizer using the token. And now we are going to see the request authorizer and the first part lines are the same where we have the type of the API, the properties, the stage name, until we start defining the authorizer. We have, in this case, my Lambda request authorizer and we will define it there. The payload type is a request, the function ARN is my function ARN and then in the identity you must specify at least one of headers, query strings, state variable or context. And then if you put a query string you need to put what is the parameter, in this case auth, and if you have a header you need to put the name of the header, in this case it's approval and then reauthorize every 100 milliseconds. This is the caching. So now let's go to the code and build this. So I will be using the SAM simplest app as the base of my project, so I don't need to code anything. This is a very simple app that just say hello world. It's not important. We just clone it into our computer and we rename it with something else. In this case, SAM API gateway 
request out you can put any name it doesn't matter you open it then in visual studio code and we can start adding things there so this is our uh, code and the only thing we need to change for this to be different is to put the name of the package to be something more descriptive some api gateway request auth we call it and i will use the same name when we are going to build our stack so let's paste that, paste that there and then our package json is ready then the, the all the scripts and everything stays the same and we will go to our template yaml the first thing i want to do is to add the function the authorizer function so i will add it there i will add it under the hello function and what it does it just calls a function that is in the folder authorizer and in the um, hardware file with the method authorizer so it's super simple so we are going to create that folder the authorizer and then i'm going to create the file handler and here i will put the authorizer method that basically will grab the query string because we are validating the query string and the header so i will grab the query string the auth that is the uh, parameter that i'm very interested in and the header that i'm interested in that is the approval and then if the header is equal approve and the query string parameters that specific one is uh, yes then I will approve this and we allow this whole thing and voila, it works. And if not, then I will deny this uh, request. So we are going to then um, build the generate auth response method. The generate auth response takes a principal, an effect and a method, and it generates a policy and returns the principal, that is the user in this case, and the policy document. And the policy basically is grabbing the effect, the allow or deny, and the thing that wants to be executed after this, in this case, the API gateway, and we'll create an invoke for that. So the next thing we need to do after we have the handler.js for the authorizer is to add the authorizer. So we are going to my API in template YAML, and we are going to add in the, after the stage name, in the line 10, the authorizer. We have a default authorizer called my lambda request authorizer, and then we will create that authorizer. It's important here to put the payload type to be request. If we don't put anything, just the function ARN, it will create a token uh, one by default. So as we did in the previous video that we didn't specify anything, we just went with all the defaults and it created a token one. So if you want to have the request, you need to put the payload type to be request and then the function ARN, the name of the function that we just created there. And then you need to specify at least one header, query string, state variables or context to, for this to work. So as I said, we are going to get the query string um, parameter auth and the header name approval. So there is the ones that we are looking for. It's important to put them here because if these are not in place, then the authorizer lambda will never execute. So API Gateway will look that the query string parameter is in place and the header is in place and um, then uh, it will execute this lambda. If one is this missing, it will not execute the lambda. So it's very important. And then you just uh, initialize the authorizer because you need to have a package chase on there. So I do npm init, and then I'm ready to deploy the whole thing. Uh, npm run deploy. So this will run my deployment script that I have created in the simplest app that basically puts everything in the cloud. It takes a moment and after it's completed, then we can test it. I will speed this up because it takes a while to deploy. And when it's ready, we come back. Now that it's ready, I will open um, Postman and we can try this out. So I will grab the URL that is in the output and put the get hello. And this will return me then authorized because there is no query string parameters or headers. So this will just be rejected by the API gateway. It never gets to the authorizer. Now I will add the query string parameter, yes. And then I will add the header that is a approval or something like that let's double check in the handler i hear the approve and the approval approval is the name and the value is approval 
So we put the right things and then we send this request and now we can see that we get something back. So now I remove the header and you see again that it's unauthorized because it's not getting to the Lambda whatsoever. But if I put in the header something that is not valid, then I get the error that the user is not authorized, that this is returned by the Lambda, the authorizer Lambda itself. So it's a very interesting uh, example, very simple and very powerful where you can do a lot of things. The code, as always, is in GitHub and the link is in the description box below. That was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions or something you want to see about some Cognito, Lambda, API Gateway, whatever, let me know in the comment box below. I like to make videos that you want to watch. Around here, there are other videos from my channel that you might be interested in following up. And if not, I see you next week with another episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao!